You know, I think uh, one thing that you'll find with Hallmark actresses is, is that we really understand economical shooting coverage, which is why I think we make such good directors. Um, the goal is to focus on the material, go towards the love, go towards the connection. That's what our audiences really respond to is that connection. Um, so figuring out how to capture that in a timely way means that there need to be efficiencies, you know, not just in the connection between people, but also in, in the shooting of it, which has been a, like a really big awakening for me in the last like five to eight years, you know? Hi everyone. Welcome to the SAG-AFRA Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I am Kara Warner, staff writer at People Magazine and your very lucky moderator today. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you so much for your support. And for more information, um, if you'd like this programming, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and now it is my extreme pleasure to introduce our wonderful panelists today. A wonderful group, a wonderful group of leading actors on Hallmark and many other uh, programs. Nikki Deloach, Holly Robinson Pete, JC Elliott, Ashley Williams, Heather Emmons, Aaron Cahill, and casting director Penny Perry. Welcome everyone. Yay. As I said before, I have a thousand questions for everyone. Not going to take all day though. Um, I would love to start since we're here with the SAG After Foundation. I would love to hear how you got your SAG card whoever wants to share. And if you like have it actually a tangible card still or if it's gone virtual. I definitely have a tangible card. I was, um, I think I was, well, it was Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> so <laughs> I, had, I was 12 years old. <laughs> uh, is there a prize for the person who got it the earliest? That's all I wanna know. <laughs> Probably, I might have you be, I looked it up today because I was curious because I was like, what a great question. When did I get my SAG card? I got it in 1989, you guys. I must have done a commercial or something when I was a kid that I don't remember doing. You are a young thing. I got mine. Are y'all ready for the year I got mine? Yes. And don't anybody say I wasn't born yet. 1977. I was That's 13, right. I was 13, and it might the part was an after school special. You have to be a certain age to remember the after school special. Penny knows. I've cast um, them. You <laughs> cast them, right? And um, yeah, I didn't know what SAG was. Uh, but uh, but I remember my mom telling me you got to get your SAG card. And I was like, okay. I didn't know what a big deal it was until mm -hmm. many years later, until the beginning of all the SAG awards, when they talk about what year they got it. And I have such pride now that it was in 77, but yeah, I think I definitely think I'm the oldest one here for that. I got mine when I was 19 or 20 for this one line that I did in the Dukes of Hazard, the kind of newer reboot. And that one line was quintessentially cut. I went into the theater by myself to go watch my big movie debut and it was not there. <laughs> So that was a great, great lesson, great way to start it off, but I got my SAG card. Heather, I think we've all had that experience where we all did one line on something or one scene or two scenes, and we were like, put, put the family around the TV or, or the screen, and then we're like, wait, wait, where am I? I did the camera, Yeah, the camera zooms past my face. I'm like, ah. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> yeah. So if I... I I, I'm a little like you, Holly. I think I got it probably the last one. I got it right after I moved from France to the States. And I didn't understand what how big of a deal it was to have a SAG card. And I got it when I, I started on the show that I'm on right now. And, um, and they sort of made it happen for me. And so it took me a while to understand what it actually meant to have a SAG card. Uh, but now I'm very proud to have it. It's, yeah. it's like a badge of honor, really. Yeah, I got mine. I was, uh, I think I was 11 and I, I just, I did a commercial, but I had been auditioning, you know, for all kinds of things. And you know, the sign in sheet when you go in and it says SAG after, or, or maybe just said SAG at the time, I don't know. And you had to say yes. And I was always like, no, no. And I remember the first time I remember my mom was there and she was like, you get to play yes. It was like, <laughs> 
I was like exclamation point. <laughs> I'm just glad they still like the, that you have the cards because I think, you know, that's, that's a badge of honor. Yeah. And, and, and with the big number on there, like the year is like so prominent on there. So I think that's really cool. I think also the cool thing about it is like, you know, when you're young and you come into this business, you have all these dreams of like, oh, maybe one day I'll like be in the Oscars or the Emmys. And then you're in this business for a minute and you're like, oh my gosh, I already won because I'm a working actor. Yes. I can pay my bills. <laughs> So the SAG card, and as long as you've had it, is this like actual physical representation that you've been able to stay alive in this business for as long as you have. It is really a badge of honor. Well, and all of you have have had such, you know, varied, wonderful, successful careers. I'm wondering, this is sort of a loaded question, so if you do not have an answer, it's fine. But if you could tell yourself at the time, if you could tell yourself anything at that time when you got the card, is there anything you would want to know about where you are now or, or are you just happy how things have gone? Um, yeah, everyone's road is, is different. Every experience is different. Um, and to be where you are today and be fulfilled, you, you couldn't have changed a thing. But one thing I wish, and I'm still working on today, that's why it's applicable, is that I try to spend more time living my life as actors, we spend so much time waiting for auditions or staying in town because something might happen. We might get an appointment or book a job. And the more that I have tried to um, travel the world, have life experience, not try to get my heart broken, but suffer heartbreak, you know, fall in love, do those things. They enrich your life as an actor. And I, yes. I wish I knew that a little bit earlier. So I wasn't so myopic about just booking a job life and what you bring to that job is what's going to help you can work and continue to work well said That's exactly so the diversify i was saying diversify your joy diversify what you're interested in diverse because it I, I teach as well and it's the one thing that i tell my students is like don't make this your single like if you're just getting your joy from being an actor, like you're going to be a very unhappy person. Like you said, Heather, live your life, find other things that light you up, that make you happy. Um, other things that you can pour your energy into because it, that is going to make for a full life and it's going to feed everything that you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just thinking back, I have a crazy story, which is that like, right, right. Oh, this would have been like 12 years ago. My agent dropped me. I hadn't worked in a really long time. I was all out of money. And I said, okay, the acting thing's over. I did it. You know what? I had a good run and I became a full-time doula. So I was helping women um, throughout their pregnancy and throughout labor, et cetera. And then I, after like eight months of doing exclusively that I got a random audition for a movie. And I was like, well, I'm never going to get this. I'm not even an actress anymore. I'll just go in. So I went in and I gave like a, you know, mediocre audition, but at the end of it, um, one of the casting directors said, well, you know, I just had a baby and blah, blah, blah. I said, Oh, who is your doctor? And it turned out it was a doctor. I had just done a birth with. And we talked about birth for a minute. And then she said, you know what? come back in here. Let's see if we can get you this job. Um, and so it was only because I had thrown myself into this whole other world of, of being a doula that I got, she actually paid attention to me when I was in the room, you know? So I've, I always say that diversify your interests. That's very well put. And yeah. oh, and I got that job. <laughs> I got that job. That was a, a Warner Brothers movie. Yeah. But it was only because I was a doula. Anyway, I'm going to stop. Ash, that's, I, I, that's yeah, that's the best advice too. Is like because I think a lot of us are so passionate about. Also, we've been so fortunate, and that we want to give back. And there are causes we're all passionate about, like you girls with your Alzheimer's, and I know Holly, you have so many things. You, you all of us are. And so I think that's really important too. Is like just to yeah, piggyback on that. Have something you're really passionate about other than the business, because she can be a very cruel mistress. Yes. And also just, it's not that deep. Some of these losing mm -hmm. these jobs and not getting some of these jobs, they just felt like, like my whole life was over in the moment. Like I felt so bad about myself. I will go back and tell her it's not that deep, relax. You didn't get this job. You'll get something else. I, I, I mean, and, and it's, it's so emotional in the moment. And when you're young and acting, you just think you'll never get another job again. And it just, you feel that, 
that rejection, that pain. I was up for Halle Berry's part in Boomerang. I wanted that role so bad. And Eddie Murphy flew me from LA to New York to audition for it. Now, Halle was the hottest thing in the world at that point. I knew I wasn't going to get the part. I only wanted the audition to get in front of the producers so that I could get something else later on. And I got to New York. I'm walking out the door. The phone's ringing. And it was my manager saying, um, don't go to the audition. They, they want Halle. They don't want to see anybody else. And I didn't even get a chance to audition. When I tell you I walked along the street to New York, like, I mean, so sad. You could have done a whole movie with me walking down Times Square, like my life was over. And I went into this bar and I was just like, I never want to act again. I'm just, I suck. I'm terrible. I'll never get another job. And Quincy Jones, so random, Quincy Jones was in there. And he said, if you're going to make Eddie Murphy uh, if Eddie Murphy's going to make you quit the business, then maybe you should quit. <laughs> like, and I wow. remember going, you're right. He goes, it's one job, Holly. And I was like, you're right, Quincy. And I just sucked it all up and moved on. But when I think, when you think in the moment, how much it hurts, the rejection, how you feel, how you take it so personally, I would tell that young girl, it's not that deep, relax, breathe, something else will happen. Yeah. Well, there's so many reasons why people get jobs and don't get it. You can't really figure it out. I mean, so I, I know that when people come in and they don't get jobs, they'll get it something else I'm doing. That's why I wanted to read Very random. Him, as I knew that you would be in there and you would say, oh, well, they want Holly, but maybe Holly will get something else. Right. But, you know, you, you know, we can't help it. We internalize it so much. That's how we who we are as actors. And we just can't help it. But I, I would... I wish that when you, when we were younger, we, I mean, I personally just didn't take it so personally. Um, yeah. I, feel like I lost a lot of nights mm -hmm. just being sad about stuff that, you know, was out of my control that I did my best, you know? Yeah. I like yeah, that it's not that deep. I think one thought that I had a little later um, and I wish I had known before is that um you go to an audition and people will pick you to do a role that ultimately you want to look good in and you want to be able to do sometimes a service done to you to know the role that you're not meant to be doing because there's a chance that you can do that and then if if you're if you don't feel right if it doesn't work if you're if you're having to squish yourself in a way that doesn't feel like what you're trying to put out there, it just ends up not looking right and you won't look good in it. And so sometimes I, I wish I had that thought in mind a little more that like, you know, you're not meant to do that job for because you're not meant to be that person. And it would be a disservice to, in, in any case. That's a good sometimes shortcut into feeling better about myself. <laughs> Such such good answer is so empowering. It's kind of what I hoped I would hear from you all. Um, Penny, I think this is a great time to bring you in because I mean, you've been in the business 30 years, I think is accurate. Maybe, Maybe a little, little more. <laughs> I'm just wondering, I guess broadly, if you can kind of talk about why you love casting and, and if it's if it's changed a lot and, and looking at your resume, it looks like you do, I mean, 20 projects a year in the last few years like 12 to 20 I'm about 103 <laughs> or yeah. you, a lot matter, yeah your philosophy and kind of what why you love casting well I love actors that's one reason but I just wanted to say something about the last question um I think that people are, are would be shocked if they know why people get things. I was doing a really big movie, which I will remain nameless. And one of the major roles, the starring roles, got cast because that person looked like the director's son. And the, I mean, it's crazy. So you never know why somebody gets something. And so don't ever be hard on yourselves, ever. Because if you're true to who you are, you'll get the part that you're supposed to get. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel. Um I, yeah, I have been doing this a long, long time. And uh, at, working at Hallmark is a little bit different because everything moves very, very quickly. Our shoots are three-week shoots. I usually have maybe two weeks to cast everything. And it it's, goes really, really quick. So you have to love what you do or else you would 
not do it. But these lovely ladies make my job a lot easier because not only are they wonderful actors, they become your friends and we're family here. And so it's very, very different than before when I was doing movies and uh, working for networks and stuff. It, it's it, it's a lot nicer here. It's really great. So um because when I would do a movie, uh, I could it could take a year to get something cast. You weren't, you know, it, it, this goes bam. Um, and also the thing that's changed tremendously, and I think COVID also has made it change, is it's now self-tapes, Zoom meetings. You're not getting into the room to really be with people, which, which you get a lot of energy when you come into the room. And uh, so that's changed tremendously. And uh, I don't think for the better. So hopefully we'll be getting into more rooms again. Uh, but like I said, I love actors. And the only thing I, advice I could give to you is be real, be who you are. You are enough. And that's all I want from somebody when they come in. One thing I, this is again, I, I've been very lucky to speak to some of you guys when you're promoting your films. But one thing it seems to me is that Hallmark specifically hires like pretty good humans in addition to talented people. And I'm wondering if, you know, Penny, you can speak to this as well, or, or you all have what that kind of being a part of the Hallmark family means and, and what makes it kind of a great place to work in, even though you are having these insane. Well, when we look for people, we look for people that are vulnerable, that are likable, that you can relate to, because our audience, when they watch everyone, they feel like they know them. I mean, I'm sure they walk up on the street to all you guys and talk to you. And if I have something that says Hallmark on me, even at the grocery store, I have people come up and say, oh, I was so sick and you saved my life. And I mean, there's so many people of Hallmark. So I just look for people that can be themselves and show their vulnerability and their love and that's it <laughs> how about for you all what's what's the comfort of hallmark if it is i i feel like you know it's it's a happy place to be but i i'm projected no it's so happy i mean we genuinely we promote each other's movies i i mean like i started in this business when i was really young i've worked for fox i've worked for cbs i've worked for mtv i've worked for like so many different networks this it's a very rare situation what we have here where you might form a family obviously on a tv show if you've been on it long enough where you become a family you're really close you know um you're in each other's weddings but to have a network of people where you might not ever you know holly and i've never done a movie together but like i hear that you know, she's going through something with her family, right? An email goes out immediately. Hey, Holly, I'm thinking about you, sending you so many prayers. I'm so sorry that you're going through this with your mother-in-law. You know, um, I, it, that's how everyone, like everyone is that way. And it's legit and it is real and it's authentic. And how can I help you? How can I be a part of your life? What do you need? You know, Andrew Walker, if somebody's sick, he'll send juices. He has a juice company. Like, every, like everybody is that way. And I think that if you're, if you're not, you kind of just like, maybe we'll, you know, find your way into some other network at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would just add, I absolutely 100% agree with everything you said, Nikki. I do feel that way about this network and the, the way the way we all sort of work together. And because we all have these same, we, we understand the shoots and how, you know, how, how hard, difficult they can be. Um, but when you do get to work with some of these people, I mean, I fell in love with Ashley Williams. I mean, it was so hard and so cold when I fell in love with her on our Christmas and everything. How can you not? I mean, <laughs> it's so hard to love Ashley, but I tried, you know what I mean? <laughs> she just, I just, the minute I saw her, I felt so, I just wanted to be around her. Yeah. And I just feel like that, I felt like that about a lot of my co-stars. And, and then again, a lot of people that I've just met on the network. Um, and so there is a camaraderie that is very different from, as you said, Nikki, all the other networks and the way you kind of pop into a show, but you don't always feel so connected with the other people on the network. So you, Hallmark is really unique in that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's, you know, our stories are centered around love, tradition, 
family, grandparents, grandchildren. Um, and, but also, so it's, so it's all about the love and it's all about the connection, but we only have 15 days, right? So, um, so when you meet a co-star, it's usually, you know, day one, and there's this immediate, like, we have 90 minutes to get this scene. We need to <laughs> day. 30 years of history and a future, you know, together, I've got your back and you've got mine, you know, hold my beer. Let's go. It's kind <laughs> of, <laughs> it's like, we're going to dive in together because there's no option. There's no room for anyone <laughs> or a yeah. jerk. There's just literally no time, you know? So it's kind of like, hold my hand, let's jump, you know? And suddenly it's 15 days later and you're crying and you're like, this is so <laughs> forever, you know? It's cool that way. And 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 I love just to touch on what what Nikki said. We like genuinely want to promote each other's movies. Like it's our friends. We're so proud of our friends. And like Ashley said, this is the network that's all about love in all its forms. Like and and I, I like we love to sing it from the rooftops for each other. That's how excited I was. Ah. Um, you know, to be on this network, but also like proud of my friends' movies and my friends. And so yeah, it's the most special network in, in, in the world for that. I actually have a funny story about that really quick. Uh, my very first movie with Hallmark, very new to the family, this was a few years ago. And I remember the night before it premiered, Holly Robinson Pete retweeted uh, about the movie. And I've been big Holly fan for years and years. And that, I remember that just meant so much to me mm. to see her supporting my movie that was coming on the next day. And I was nervous about it. And then, Holly, I saw you at a spa, <laughs> like maybe a year or two after that. I don't know how long after that, but I ran up to you very awkwardly in the spa. And I was like, thank you so much for your retweet. That meant so much. And you were just like, yes, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I was, but anyway, <laughs> that's how much we support each other. And it, it means the world to, you know, to put it out and to bring it in. It's really nice. Oh, Heather, I hope I wasn't rude to you in the spa. You know, when I go no. to the spa, that's the that's that's when like I'm rock bottom when I get there. <laughs> but I remember, I remember, right, I remember doing that though. I mean, I just thought, oh my god, I, we didn't know each other, but I just thought, like, I just, I just I mean, the project looked so beautiful and and I was just I just was inspired by it. I really do like the content that we create. And also welcome to the family. It's like an important thing to do. Like if somebody is new and comes into the world, right? It's like, it's like if you're on a show and you're one, number one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever on the call sheet, you're a series regular and somebody comes in and does a guest star or a day player or joins reoccur or joins the cast. Like, you know, I remember going on to other people's shows and sometimes it was wonderful. And sometimes, you know, nobody talked to you. I remember what that felt like when nobody gave me the time of day on their show. And I thought, oh, if I ever have an opportunity to be, you know, a series regular on a show, I want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. Like, hi, what is your name? Thank you for being here. And I think everybody in, in this network does the same thing. So I think it's part of that too. I love that you did that, Holly. Well, thank you, Holly, in a more appropriate atmosphere. I really appreciate it. Thank you so oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki uh, goes I, to the extreme. She she meets her uh, co-stars and then she has them stay at her house. Remember? That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I have a guest house. Do you want to stay? <laughs> sure. I know we just met like five minutes ago, but yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, the to piggyback on what Nikki was saying, I think maybe of all of the ladies here, I might be the newest person to kind of come into the whole Hallmark Hallmark world. And what I keep coming back to is um, I feel like I've pushed the door to Oz where everybody's just, it felt like everyone was just one, one person at a time was just like pulling my hand and, and taking me into like this wonderful magic wonderland that like has you know, so much heart and so much positivity. And, and it's, it, it is truly a gem to find in the world of Hollywood, this place where every single person is committed to intentionally making you feel welcome and accepted and part of the group, whether, whatever, whatever you're here to do really, truly. And um, I feel like I, I just, it's, it's been like, 
it's, it's been so heartwarming to realize that you can do this job in this sort of environment. I love it. <laughs> is there, you know, speaking of the sense, you know, this is for, for actors, do you have kind of a, a words of wisdom for being able to handle those three week shoots? Cause I think it's like 15 days or whatever. Is there, do any of you have like a, you know, a way to prepare for something that is a quick, intense shoot like that? Get a really good water bottle. <laughs> Ashley always encourages everybody to drink. Every once in a while, I'll just get a random text from her that says, drink water. That's all. Don't drink water. Well, what size shoe do you wear? That's the last one I got from you. Yeah, you're right. Weird <laughs> question. But, um, you know, I think uh, one thing that you'll find with Hallmark actresses is, is that we really understand economical shooting coverage, which is why I think we make such good directors. Um, because we understand that you can't um, enter a scene in and land here and then walk over here or that adds an hour and a half to, to, the, to the scene shooting right, right. So the goal is to focus on the material go towards the love go towards the connection that's what our audiences really respond to is that connection um so figuring out how to capture that in a timely way means that there need to be efficiencies you know not just in the connection between people, but also in, in the shooting of it, which has been a, like a really big awakening for me in the last like five to eight years, you know, I I'll jump in. I do a ton of prep up top, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, I think in Aaron's uh, nodding her head, I do a ton of prep before go, because my, my thing is I don't want to be, and I also always ask for a read through, um, to, to, to really talk about like, you know, especially with the like number one and number two director, creative executive on the project, anyone else who wants to join for sure. Um, but that that is critical time because let's have conversations about anything that we have questions about. We're bumping up against, uh, you know, what if we did this here potentially? Because what I don't want to do is have those questions on the day because we don't have time for it. You know, we don't have time to be pulled aside and, you know, well, I just don't understand what my character's thinking here. There's no time, no time. You should have done that before we started the shoot. So, you know, of course there's little things you'll tweak on the day and in the moment. But for me, I have found that if we do the read through and if I do all of my prep up top with my coach, um, then it's going to, I'm going to go into every single day knowing how I'm entering the scene. Um, and then I just get to play, you know, mm -hmm. cause that's what you want it to be about. You don't want to be like memorizing lines. You don't want to be like, you want to just like be able to show up the set and play. So for me, it is all about prep. That's, I was nodding so emphatically. Cause that's what I was, when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking, gosh, this, it is, it's prep the, before the shoot starts, like you prep the whole arc and the character and like and I have this tab system that looks hilarious like I wish I had a picture of it ready it's just a bunch your tab of system is amazing <laughs> but it, it's that because it's like all that prep and then you can just like Nikki said then you can just play and be free mm -hmm. and, and 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 then I have like little things I do like Ashley's water I have the night before I lay out my clothes and my vitamins and my collagen powder put it in my little backpack with my tabbed out notebook so that I just am like ready to go and play. I think that's so fun. It's again, outside looking in, appreciating actors, not being one myself. It's, it's fun to hear about this stuff. Um, and hopefully for people uh, watching. One thing that Hallmark I think has done wonderfully in recent years is, you know, on the subject of inclusion and diversity, um, especially with, with the holiday stuff, like we're seeing many more types of families, storylines, holidays represented. Uh, I'm wondering if you all can speak to being a part of those and like, you know, what what types of stories you seek out since you guys have all done holiday theme movies. Um, if you're looking to do something different each time you sign on to a Hallmark project. Yeah, I would say for sure. I'm so proud of this network because I remember when I first started on the uh, on the network and I think it was like 2015 ish. And um, I remember looking around going, hmm could use a little more flavor, a little more diversity, a little more, you know, telling different stories, different ways. 
not to mess with the formula, of course, because it was obviously working. And I remember them telling me, yeah, we were going to do that. And we want to do that. That's what we're working towards. And so when I look up and it makes it so easy for me as a black actress to go on a show like um, Kelly and Ryan this morning. And I don't even have to say I'm really that proud of her because I could just say, roll the clip. There's my Kwanzaa movie. It's the first Kwanzaa movie of Hallmark Channel has ever done. I roll the clip. There's the movie with uh, the first young man with autism to play, you know, a lead role. I mean, it's, it's there in the material. So they've delivered. And I just am so proud of that because so many people say they're going to deliver, but they don't. So I think when you're celebrating, we all celebrate in different ways. We experience the holidays different. Listen, a lot of people in, that I know don't know what Kwanzaa is. I happen to have celebrated. I raised my kids doing Kwanzaa right after Christmas. And so to be able to do a movie that's kind of opens people's eyes to how different people celebrate the holidays, I think it's awesome. So I'm super proud of this network and delivering on these promises. Um, and I think there's, is there more to go? Do we still have more to com things to talk about and more things to explore? Absolutely. But it's made me very proud to be part of this network. How about does it, how does it impact kind of how you all approach like what projects you're offered or if you seek out, you know, you do not that you want to do, you don't want to do the same role over and over again, but do, you know, different types of storylines, different types of characters. How do you kind of approach that? Well, I'd say that we're all kind of finding that approach together. And that's what I love about my collaboration with Hallmark is they've invited me to be a part of that process. And one of the Christmas stories that I did last year, uh, last year called Christmas in My Heart, it had a, an amazing storyline about black hair and an interracial relationship. And it was the very first time that any network had invited me to be a part of creating this story and making sure that it was ringing true for me as the actor who had to do those scenes and say those lines. And I was able to work with the writer and work with the director from pre-production and up till we were on set, just finding what felt right. So I feel like the commitment on my side and on Hallmark's side to just telling these stories together and making them feel like they're from the heart it has always felt natural to me and like the way that our relationship started and the way that it keeps to grow. So I'm, I'm happy with it. And I'm very, very honored to be, you know, part of the Hallmark family. It's changed my life. I think also there's in the way that you're saying, Heather, when you work on such a short um, project and you want to deliver as much as you can, uh, there's a certain amount of trust between directors and producers and actors to kind of deliver as, the best possible work you can. And so um, at, on the day, you sort of try to figure out what's the best version of what you're trying to put together. And I know, for example, that I, the first movie I did was a body positivity movie with Hallmark and everybody was so eager to just get my input and have me uh, talk about what it feels like to be in, you know, to be part of, uh, of, you know, an idea that's being introduced in society that, or, you know, trying to make everybody realize how everybody comes from different places and look, looks different and, and, and how that can be celebrated. And so the, the collaboration between everyone in making this as um, relatable as possible, I think is really what facilitates this, this great, you know, um, forthcoming that Hallmark has in diversity. And it's so great just as an audience uh an appreciative audience it's been wonderful i mean i feel like i've learned i personally don't know a lot about hanukkah so i was so happy to watch uh hallmark's you know hanukkah movies and learn a little bit about that and the kwanzaa one i can't wait to watch um there we're like running out of time even though i have a thousand questions i would send you later uh do you guys want to end on like Favorite holiday traditions, favorite holiday movie, You're free to plug your own things. <laughs> sure. I mean, you want to do yeah. a round round? Ash, you start. Yeah, I mean, at this point, honestly, getting to work with Hallmark means that the part of the holidays for me are about movies, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things. And I, I, I think it's so cool that 
people now, I think partly because of Hallmark, how people celebrate the holidays is partly through watching movies. And that makes me feel like we started a whole new thing. Um, so yeah. And so for me, that would also be, you know, promoting a movie. So, um, yeah, I did a movie, uh, on movies and mysteries this year, um, really, really sweet movie called uh, Five More Minutes, which is another Five More Minutes movie. Nikki Deloach did one last year and I get to do one this year. I'm trying to, you know, trying to keep up. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's a movie. it airs on Saturday night. So uh, December 17th. So check that out. Five More Minutes. Yes. Everybody watch Ashley's movie. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my movie aired um and i was i was very 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 proud of it it was i was really proud of it it was a movie about grief it's called a gift of peace um i would say for all of those people out there there's many of you i'm sure that are dealing with grief this holiday season i lost my dad last july um you know so i i came to the movie much like the character did trying to figure out like how how do you navigate this when you're, you're when your heart is just shattered right um you know it, it's it's a beautiful movie about reaching out right and 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 not carrying anything by yourself and not carrying it alone and i would say you know cuz for some people the holidays are super super celebratory and for some it's really hard so don't do it by yourself reach out whether it's a friend a pastor a support group um you know and 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 allow somebody to walk walk with you and it'll be very healing and also you'll find a lot of light and love and peace inside of it um i will also say for for me the holidays yes are about family but it's also about giving back so if there, you know, if there's a way to get involved, I do that with the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, you know, drop off gifts, um, bring food for nurses and doctors, um, you know, it, that it's a time when like, if you have something to give, whether it's your time or your money, like, you know, do it. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say. Holly? <laughs> um yeah, so uh, traditions, we really did. People are like, did you really celebrate Kwanzaa? Yes, I have the receipts. I have the pictures of my kids and, <laughs> and everything. Um, it, I feel like Kwanzaa is a celebration. I know Kwanzaa is a celebration of culture. It's cultural. It's uh, about ancestry. It's about community. And you celebrate these seven principles every day. The original name of um, Holiday Heritage was Seven Days After Christmas. And I liked that name because it really did describe when Kwanzaa starts the day after Christmas and ends on New Year's Day, which ironically is my dad's birthday. And so we kind of gave it, uh, it's a really nice flow for us. Um, um, but it's really about community and the kids learn more, I think in those seven days about their ancestry than they do all year at school. I, I see that they're all grown now. And I think that they um, are better humans because of this tradition, this family tradition. I think they're just compassionate human beings. So I love that. It's called Holiday Heritage. It airs Friday um, the 16th at eight o'clock on Hallmark Channel. Very proud of it. It's about three strong women who um, are very strong and stubborn and sort of bumping heads and Christmas and Kwanzaa brings them together. Mm. I can't wait to I'm watch it, it Holly. Yeah. All about it. Yeah, I can't wait to Thank see it. I'm no. gonna tweet about it, Holly. I'll tweet. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> Thank Me you. Too. Because <laughs> Holly, Lindy Greenwood is one of my dearest friends. Penny, did you know that? Anyway, okay. <laughs> I know I said I was in love with Ashley Williams, but I also fell in love with Lindy Greenwood. She oh, is amazing. Um, I, I fall in love with all these, all my co-stars. And but uh, she's just a she's a sweet lady. She's a special salt of the earth type of girl. Literally just talked to her today. We're going to Guatemala in January. I'll tell you all about it. I'll email you. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Um Wait, so just to piggyback, yeah, okay, so exactly what you're saying, like Holly and Ashley and Nikki, like it's honestly at the at the risk of sounding like, you know, plugging the network, but watch Hallmark, like you can get, you'll get the comfort you need if you do struggle in the holidays, you'll, you'll get to be seen if it's a tradition that you 
do that's not talked about much like like holly's movie and if you get you know like ashley's movie you can be touched but also you can there's so many fun awesome movies that will have you laughing and have you totally in the holiday you like you will taste the hot chocolate on your mouth when you're watching them so <laughs> i like go to hallmark for all your you know the whole spectrum of emotions for the holidays and then plus it's like we all want movies playing all the time you know in the holidays like music and movies so my mom my mom has it on literally 24 hours a day this time of year. Yeah. so that's a well, tradition for everyone i think <laughs> yeah we, I mean, I, I, it's a little, it feels like a little, everything that I do now feels like a Hallmark movie. Everything, every time I do something, I'm like, oh, this could be in a movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I do that I love the most is that I go home to see my family. They, they all live in France. So I'm leaving on, on Friday. So I'll catch a movie later, Holly. But um, yeah, just the, the transition from, you know, leaving to the States to going to, to, uh, to Europe, sometimes they have those holiday movies in, in the, in the planes. And it's just, it's something that wh wherever you come from, whatever country you're from or whatever, it's just, everybody agrees that that's the season for that kind of heartwarming experience and Hallmark delivers every time. So yes, Hallmark Christmas. <laughs> I think the only, and you guys, that was so wonderful. I was just enjoying listening to the ladies. I'm like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, for me, Christmas was, maybe I sound like a Hallmark character, but Christmas was something that, yeah, it had some melancholy moments, maybe just the winter I don't like. And, you know, some, some really amazing family moments that I'm fortunate to have. But I will say that being involved with Hallmark and seeing Christmas from, their perspective and their viewers perspective has just melted my icy little heart and I am 1000% <laughs> a Christmas fan and I love to gather with my family and watch all the movies and um, it's just you're really decorating crazy. cookies aren't you Heather <laughs> I'll take <laughs> everything it's all going <laughs> just sit and watch and enjoy and it, it really is about unity it's about unifying through the love through the stories with your family the the unity is there and that's what really uh drew me in and so yep here i am <laughs> perfect warm fuzzy i knew this was going to be like this <laughs> and i'm going from this up to secret santa up at hallmark we're having a, a secret santa party so oh, just continue oh, uh, <laughs> wait, oh, so fun. before we close out i'm just wondering penny can you do you have time to watch everything you cast if you're I Good actually question. do. Good I read question. every script and I watch the I watch them before they actually get on the air. Um, and so I do. I do. And I watched Holly's Kwanzaa movie and I learned all about Kwanzaa doing that movie because I didn't know anything about it. And it was so fascinating and I just loved it. And the one thing I want to say about Hallmark is a woman. They're very supportive to us as women. And Ashley yeah. Williams is starting a director's program to bring some of our women through as new directors and she's directing. So, I mean, they're real supportive and it's a wonderful place to be. Any, any secrets to, to getting cast in a Hallmark film? You did give a little tip about being yourself. Yes. Send me a note. I look at everything. I show everybody up at the office who I meet and who I think is right. So don't give up. There's a part for you sometimes. Boy, I wish all casting directors were like you. Oh, oh they're, not. They're, not. they're not. They're not. I know. And I just, oh. I'm married oh. to an actor. My daughter was an actress. I love actors. I just well, do. We love you back, Penny. Uh, yeah. Penny. I love you all too. <laughs> special, special soul. There's no one else like you. We are so lucky and blessed by you. We need to base a character on Penny. Oh God, I don't know. I was, actually, oh, no bleeping Penny moments on here, so you're not going to want to base anything on me. <laughs> but I've known Holly's mom a long time, and I love her a long time. Yeah, a long time. Love it. I mean, I feel like this is just yeah, the the, the dreamiest chat possible. We all love each other. Aside from the fact that yes. we're out of time, and I know you all have very busy schedules to get back to. Um, children to make sure that they are uh, <laughs> doing themselves quietly indoors. Haven't um, have left like, down the street. That bothered me once, and I don't know. You should worry. Good thing or a bad thing. 
I just want to, I guess, wrap it all up. I wish we had more time, but I so, I'm so grateful for all of you and your wonderful, thoughtful answers and sharing some of your experiences. So on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I am so grateful. And thank you everyone for joining and for everyone watching. Thank you for thank having you. us. This is great. So special. So thank you. Happy thank you, holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Hey. 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 Hey.